Hello, I'm Sarah Aberly, one of the senior emergency medicine residents here at Mayo Clinic, and today I'll be doing a brief case presentation as part of our case pr uh, interesting case presentation series. So I hope you find it interesting and helpful, and uh, there will be a helpful picture here for you as well in your clinical practice. Um, there will be some key points that we're going to address with this particular case. The case is centered around a 40-year-old female. She came in with a chief complaint of leg discoloration. Now this allows us to start thinking immediately of our differential diagnosis. Is it cellulitis, a DVT, stains from her genes? And so we have an idea before we even go into the room about the questions we want to ask and the exam we want to do. Our patient uh, in this case had a history of developmental delay and came to us from a group home. She did have a history of DVTs in the past, but no known cancers, and had been managed on a chronic anticoagulation plan. Unfortunately, she had had a fall and developed a subsequent intracranial hemorrhage and had to be taken off of that anticoagulation. They had placed an IVC filter and started the patient on aspirin. The patient herself provided little history. From what we can tell from her staff at the group home, she had had some swelling of the lower extremities over the last week, but much worse today, and that's when they noticed the discoloration. There were no other reported symptoms like chest pain, shortness of breath, infectious symptoms such as fever, and so this was really all we were going off of at the time. Here you see a picture of um, a patient's legs that were much similar to our patient that we had that day. You notice that on the left lower extremity in this case, there was a significant swelling of the left lower extremity and a reddish to blue discoloration. In our patients, we had to be able to Doppler the pulses because they did not have palpable PT or DP pulses. And there was even some early discoloration on the other legs. And this is a case of phlegmasia cerulea dolens. We'll also talk briefly about phlegmasia albidolens. And this literally means painful blue edema or painful white edema in the case of albidolens. It's a DVT spectrum, but involves the whole DVT system. In the case of phlegmasia albidolens, traditionally thought of as white leg or milk leg syndrome, interestingly they called it that because in pregnant patients who were getting DVTs, they thought it was a buildup of milk that was going all the way down into the leg. It's a total occlusion of the DVT system, but spares the collateral veins. And about 50 to 60 percent of these cases will progress to phlegmasia cerulea dolens. In phlegmasia cerulea dolens, it involves the whole DVT system plus the superficial and the collateral veins. Now this causes an issue because it has no venous outflow and then starts to affect the arterial inflow and that can lead to ischemia and gangrene. And there's a big risk on that one. And so if you start thinking about phlegmasia cerulea dolens and comparing that directly to phlegmasia albidolens, remember that it, the cerulea involves the collateral veins. If you want to try to remember that, they both start with C, where alba spares the collateral veins. Because of that, that's what leads to the increased congestion and hindering the arterial inflow and the risk of gangrene. If the occlusion does affect the capillaries, that's often irreversible, and that's the bigger issue. And so from a background standpoint, there's over 600,000 cases of VTE a year. About 50% of those, if left untreated, can progress to pulmonary embolism. And that pulmonary embolism can lead to 10 to 15% of hospital deaths. And so it's a very important thing to think about. Uh, cerulea dolens was first described in the 1600s and then starting to be better described in the 1930s. This most often affects women, often in their fifth to sixth decade of life. Uh, there are multiple risk factors, and in fact, 20 to 40 percent of patients who have phlegmasia cerulea dolens also have some, some kind of malignancy. Other risk factors, having an IVC filter placed, trauma, surgery, pregnancy, hypercoagulability syndromes, those type of things. More often, this prevents presents on the left lower extremity, as seen in that picture, they think it's about three to four to one. Upper extremities are rarely in, uh, affected. And if patients do develop gangrene, it's on the areas that look most discolored. So that's where you have the most congestion, the most hindrance of the arterial blood flow, the most ischemia, and then therefore the gangrene. Diagnosis is basically clinical plus imaging. Traditionally, the gold standard was thought to be venography, but duplex ultrasounds are having uh, a much bigger role these days. The reason is, is that it has a decreased morbidity to do it, and it's convenient. You can do it at the bedside, it's safe, you can repeat it often, but also MRI and MRV are other possible options. In the 
more mild cases of ceruleodolans as well as the flecknesia albodolans, you could do medical management. Key here is to elevate for the sake of the edema and high intensity heparin. So 80 units per kilo bolus as well as an 18 unit per hour drip, aiming for a goal of about 2 to 2.5 above the normal APTT. And all these patients will need oral anticoagulation for about six months. If patients do need thrombectomy or surgical evalu um, intervention, that can be done through the femoral, it can be done through transabdominal approach and ad address the caval clots, but these patients also need long-term anticoagulation. And the problem is with thrombectomy is it doesn't address the problem of the small vessels. It'll just get the clot out of the big vessels. Thrombolysis is another option, and so you can do catheter-directed or an intravascular approach of thrombolysis. You can even do systemic uh, thrombolysis, and at least that'll affect or help you with those small vessel issues that you couldn't help with thrombectomy, but it has its own risks, and uh, there are certainly contraindications to TPA and other thrombolyses. And all these patients may eventually end up with fasciotomies or even amputations. There are multiple complications and kind of a poor prognosis. Mortality in this kind of case is actually 20 to 40 percent. A third of those patients um, actually um, die because of pulmonary embolism. About 15 to 20 percent of these patients will end up with amputations, and even if they don't, they have risk of post robotic syndromes, rethrombosis, and all kinds of things. And so our patient was between a rock and a hard place because they couldn't have thrombolysis because they're intracranial hemorrhage, and so this patient got high intensity heparin and eventually a thrombectomy. Um, and I believe they eventually will end up losing the leg in the end of their hospital course. So in summary, Phlegmesia albidolans, or the white leg, is the deep DVT system but without the collaterals, but can progress to cerulea, which can progress to ischemia and gangrene. You can anticoagulate the patients with high intensity heparin, but they may need thrombolysis and thrombectomy. But even then, they still have high morbidity and mortality, mortality up to 20 to 40 percent, and they may need amputations. We have some references here, but I hope you found the case interesting and helpful. And when you ever see a, a deep purple leg like this, take it very seriously because they could have significant risks. Thank you for your attention, and I hope you have a great day.